everybody. Hope you're well, and especially to you, Pauline. Gordon's Pauline, how are you? She's been in touch, asked him to say hello. She says, you haven't been very well lately. Well, get well soon, Pauline. Let's move on here at Mr. A Builders. Now, I am stood here in my kitchen, and the whole point of this video was to demonstrate the word tops going in. Well, they're only half in, because it's a bit of an issue regarding them fitting. One doesn't. It's all getting sorted. It's all going to be in the next episode, if it's sorted by then. We shall see. There's no point alluding to it now. We'll make a full video on it, and you can make up your own mind as to, you know, state of play and, and that sort of thing. But it doesn't matter what happens, as long as it gets rectified, and it's getting rectified. So there we go. So we're going to move on. It sort of threw this episode out a little bit, but uh, still progress is being made about. So I thought, let's just document it and put it out there. Who knows? Eh? What, what's the, uh, what possible harm could it, do, could it do? So anyway, moving on. Do you remember this panel here? It's the one that was left by the panel company who very kindly donated four panels to do the ensuite upstairs. Well, there was one left over and we need to utilize it somewhere and we're going to do it and we're also going to utilize a lot of other things that we found around kind of apollo 13 macgyver style lock of the 18 into a shed see what they can come out with kind of way and uh we're going to make a sink with taps here we go and here he is said richard hello richard how are you Strange, strange voice. Um, right then, this is his new toy. Do you want to show us your little new toy? Mm. It's a Milwaukee cut-off. Comes with varying, varying blades. This is like a one mil, um, I don't know, like a one mil metal type, plastic type. Right? There's a tall one, there's a mason one, there's a, a wood one actually. A wood one I bought separate. Doesn't come with it. So it's like a multi-tool kind of cut-off saw. Yeah, you've got an thing. attachment as well. You can attach a hoover too. So you can, you know, if you're doing tiles, you can attach a hoover. So like a little fence to catch a dust. It's nice. Mm -hmm. Why not cut the carpet? What? Not... <laughs> <Doesn't matter. laughs> right, and so, yeah, we'll show you using that. Let's go a trim a little bit off this. He's just scribed it into so the... Tiny bit there, that's what it is. Ah, uh, there we it's go. A bit of as well. Gotcha. Uh, yeah, and then we'll get this, uh, get this glued on. And then we'll see whatever harebrained ideas I've come up with. So right, let's give it a go. Right, step two in making it up as you go along. Glue that on. Exactly the same way as we did in the previous episodes where we used these panels upstairs in the ensuite. Right, how do we do the top? And then the reason why that's open is because the hot and cold feed come across the ceiling. Um, and I told Mitch the plumber just to leave them up there and we'll sort it out. Originally build them into the wall, bring them out wherever. But now we've gone down this, this route of leaving them exposed down the front. So how do we close that off? Well, we've got a bit of cedar knocking around. Not many people have cedar knocking around, but we did that garden room, don't we, last year, and there's a couple of offcuts, and that good of stuff, we can't, we can't throw away. So I kept it, and it's coming in, so we're gonna blanket off with the cedar, with two holes, obviously, for the hot and cold to come down. And then the stuff that uh, we're using for, uh, again, things we've got lying around, Got two lengths of copper, turns out I only need the one, so obviously I'll use the, uh, the cleaner one. Now I have had to go out and see this idea through by buying stuff. So it's gonna come through the cedar, if you can imagine, into an isolation, which is stopcock. It's all, it's all gonna mash as need brass and copper all the way down. Um, it's, we'll make up as we go along, but it's still gotta be, you know, still gotta look all right, hasn't it? Um, gonna be clipped, to the panels with these nice brass clips, just two on each one. And then it's gonna go straight into basically a garden hose tap or a bib tap, you ever wanna call it, which will be attached to the bracket, which is also an elbow, which has worked out very nicely. So that gets put onto the wall like so, straight up into our cedar ceiling. And that is basically it. Uh, what else is there? Nothing. Really, yeah. 
So we're going to build all that up, put it sort of into a sink that we haven't got yet. And then, uh, yeah, we'll see where we get go from there. Right, this is what we've made. It's all a bit of a uh, make-up as you go along. Garden taps on the copper that was left over. Onto the stopcocks for isolation valves and yeah, it's all been measured. All ready to go in. We'll put them in now. We'll show you how they look once they're on. And then we'll go through my sink idea, which is, uh, well, yeah. And here we have it. Taps are in, as you can see. Richard just built a bit of a shelf for what we're going to use as the sink. There's a bit of a story behind that, which I'm going to go into in a second. But that's it. It's a bit difficult to film in the end. It all needs polishing up, obviously, to get the full effect. But there we have it. That seed has come up lovely. That needs just a little bit of a, bit of a cleaning off. Excellent. All live. All works. Right then. Sink. What are we doing? Well, as I say, there's a bit of a story. Right, picture the scene. We buy the house, we go into the loft where I am now. And there were four items in that loft. That is it. There was a empty cardboard box that was for a toaster. That obviously went in the bin. There was an old water tank, little plastic open lid thing, not too sure what they're called. Redundant years ago, only about the same size as a, a small fish tank. That's gone. There was this stall thing which will become a bedside table for the bed up here which is just going in that little uh, triangle over there and something else that I've decided I'm going to use as the sink and that something else is <laughs> come on perfect part of the house I was always going to keep it I was going to put logs in it Maybe have it by the fire, but <laughs> come on, that's all right, isn't it? Which is just obviously, as I say, put the shelf in, gonna clad it in that cedar a little bit of that cedar we've got left, which is cutting now, as you can hear. So I've got to drill a hole in it, clean it all up, drill a hole in it. I mean, come on, that's all right, isn't it? I've even got. I accidentally bought another waste when I already had one for the sink upstairs. So I've already got a, uh, a trap for it, or a waste for it, I should say, and a trap which I acquired uh, around here somewhere. But yeah, got a hole for it, go through that. I mean, come on, man, come on, it's all there, isn't it? It's it quite sounds like you pinched it. I don't think you pinched it. No, true. It's, I, um, well, well, you may have done. May have done. There it is, look. There it is. You pick up over the years. You, you, what happens is you buy things like this. You forget that you've bought them. You buy another one for a job. Then you find it. Blah blah blah. So, yeah, that's going to go there. And it's just going to be, you know, just a big bag of lovely. Big bag of lovely, with a cider base. <laughs> right. Well, there's no way I'm going to get this past quality control without cleaning it up even though I'll be quite happy not to do it and have it exactly how it is. But it's some glue when we're doing the, the loft conversion, it's some glue that went on it, in it or whatever. So I suppose I'd better get that off, even though, you know, I quite like it. So in, anyway, I've got some of these bad boys when I clean the steel up from my previous episode. I'm going to get a bit of a scrub, put it in a drill, and then I'm going to cut an hole in it. This isn't a metal bit, this is just from a cheap kit. It should be quite soft anyway, I would have thought. Even if I burn it out, whatever. Just get it through it. Let's do it. But if you look, it's even concave at the bottom. I don't know whether you can see that. So all the walls are... Oh, it's made for it, isn't it? All the water's going to go straight to the middle. It's made for it. So let's, uh, let's give it a go. See how she turns out. Will you tell me whether that looks any different? I've gone a bit sink blind. Spent a bit of time cleaning it all up with them. a brush thing in one of them, but it seems to have got a lot off. Let's give it a, a wipe over. It's, it's, it's alright, isn't it? 
That's all right. Right then, let's uh, let's get it in. I've had to. When I said I was going to just, it'll just. Good see. It'll just burn through with that. It's uh, it didn't work. On the scale of well, of course it wasn't going to work. What the hell was you thinking? Kind of way. So we had to, as you can see. Can you see? What the hell? It's not the beginning of a James Bond film, any. Um. Let's just drill it through, bit by bit, stitch drill it. But it'll do, it'll do. Time for a CT1 to, to shine, isn't it? Oh, here he is. Da -da 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 -da. Oh. <laughs> well, there she is in place, not fixed down yet, because we can't film for anything, so that's how it is in here. In fact, I think I can get square onto it without get further back but as I, as I said it's naturally well say so naturally you know whatever curved at the bottom which makes it a bit wobbly and Richard suggested maybe tapping it square a bit so it sits a bit better but I'm reluctant to do that because the shape of it at the minute means that water is just going to go straight to the middle and also if we start knocking it I don't want to crack any crack any seals on it or anything like that so we're going to gunk the absolute living life out of it and then we're going to gunk that waist in and then attach the waist from underneath and just clamp it into place and then just leave it let it do its thing or let the sealant do its thing and that should then be it which has said have you filled it with water yet to see if it holds water well no i haven't but uh well you know let's go for it Let's gunk it down, clamp it, leave it overnight, and come back to it tomorrow. And there we have it. What do you think about that then? I think that that is quite a lovely, lovely thing. All done, mainly done, with, uh, with scraps, basically. As I say, that was in the loft. Those were left over from the garden room. Off cuts at probably around about 100 mil longer than what you can see there, as obviously was his stuff. Copper um, was one length too many that I bought for the job. That came um, free, that was left over for the ones free from the panel company. So all I've bought for any of this is the uh, taps, the clips, and the stop taps at the top. Oh, and two push fit connectors above that. And there we have it. I think that's really quite nice. Even all this, we had lying about. That's an old one. I think I took off a job, so I've got to keep an eye on that. For obvious reasons, just lying about, man. So it's just, you know, I ain't got the money to go and buy a proper one, so to speak. So let's make do. Even that was lying about. Now, I didn't want, I might, I might take that off. It looks better with that on, but I might take that off because, um, so then it can't be left in. So then if the tap is left on, it can't overflow. Um, so yeah, we'll have to see how that goes. Well, then the kids are old and out to mess around and do something as silly as that, but we'll see. We shall see. So there we have it. I'm very happy with that. Right then, let's move on. Well, first off, I've just whipped the door off and I'm just giving it a, a scrape back as best I can. Not changing the frame for reasons why I'll go into in a second. I used uh, this stuff originally. It's the same brand as I used as the uh, stain blocker that I used in previous episodes. Don't get them mixed up. I just added to basket. I bought three of the stain blocker and one of these just to try it. I've expelled it all now. He did a very good job. It's very, very good. I'd recommend that. Um, but as I said, that's a bit of an experiment. And then I've got the old world famous Nitromorse on it, which apparently isn't as good as it once was, but it's by no means rubbish. It's, uh, yeah. In fact, it's, it's still quite excellent. So it must have been absolutely fantastic back in the day. But there we go. So I'm just taking that back as much as I can, as best I can. And there we have that. Um, the reason why I'm not having a new frame 
is because I don't know whether you can see it but look how much that frame is over it's amazing it is it's got to be built like it the house is fine it's not it's not leaning even though we're an end terrace and we're you know well over 100 years old um the gable was fine the gable was lovely and plumb but that i mean it's a rubbish level it's barely a level it's a fake stabilla but that is showing plumb to the level and i don't know if that is how far it's out so there's no way a new frame is going to be able to be fitted into that of any real quality so we're going to keep it and we're going to put a reclaimed door back in it over to richard and this is the new one sort of incorrect use of the word new uh, in the hole and as you can see what we looked at earlier we've got a bit of a gap but the state of that frame was always going to take some kind of jiggery pokery but what we're thinking now is is that maybe wouldn't we could instead of cutting that down the door down to fit the par parallelogram whatever of the frame we might be able to cut a bit off the old door and plant it on the top and make it fit that way and maybe again something to do at the bottom you're saying rich you reckon because there's a 30 mil gap on the left hand side off the sill the stone sill but we can always make that up and then put a weather bar on the bottom hardwood weather bar yes we do need a hardwood with a bar don't we mm. on the back and uh rich's banned me from taking the one off the original door but uh here we go and it looks lovely it looks it lovely indeed yeah and i mean the whole point that's not supposed to be some um ultra uh, airtight thing that's just in keeping with the house secure looks nice it's here is where the thermal break is so to speak the, as i said earlier brand new upvc double glazed door going in there now the only issue is what i didn't explain earlier is that above in this vestibule i suppose is what it is directly above is our bedroom so that's going to have to be highly insulated obviously because that's going to be drafty um so i'll vapor barrier that where i haven't done any other ceilings in the house um but we'll seal all that up the best we can um put more insulation in it's humanly possible even though that's not possible you know what i mean <laughs> i'm gonna put more in the put it in yeah and then take it out and board it <laughs> yeah yeah you know what i mean um yeah, so that's a consideration there really, but it's just making that look good. And then choosing the colour. So what we're doing here then, we have cut all Rich's cut, I say we, we all we. He's cut, what's that Rich, five mil? Uh, yeah, five mil, a yeah. Five mil rip off the old door, which we reckon is mahogany. So it's good stuff. And then we are gluing that onto the side of our new door, so to speak. And then we've got a bit of a wedge cut there, for want of a better expression, to go on the top. So it's a bit of a, yeah, it's, you know, that's, the frame is 60 mil out of plumb. So we've got to do what we've got to do, haven't we? You know what I mean? And it's, uh, well, it's my house, so I'm happy with it. So there we go. So we're going to plant that on and then we'll fill it in due course. But first and foremost, really, we need to get it swing, fitting and swinging, don't we? So we'll give that a go. And we'll see how far we get. Right, we're going all out here in terms of making do. Pin that on. We've glued, pinned it. And now we're going to put more glue down it, as Rich is doing. And I've got the uh, the bag off the saw. Sprinkling some of this, we're going to call it mahogany dust, because it sounds lovely, in that. And try and sort of a head start on the filling. This isn't going to give it its final, you know, the final fill. But... And it's going we'll to sand it in. It's going to go a little bit way of yeah, sanding it in, and it should see us uh, put us on the on the right track. Right, she's been fitted. It's all beautiful, swinging, lovely. But we've done a lot of sanding, as you say. We've added that piece on there, or rich as I should say, and along the top. So I filled it all, sanded it all, and obviously it's took a little bit of the undercoat and primer off that we dad put on so painstakingly so i'm just going to uh, go over it just with a spray not the entire thing as i say it's already been done with an inch of its life just to 
recoat these bits nice and evenly, blend it all back into what's already there. Do that both sides. This stuff supposedly dries in, touch dry in 15 minutes, which doesn't mean dry though, does it? But you know what I mean. So we'll get that on, let that dry for a bit. I'll go and paint some skirtings upstairs. Don't worry, I'm not going to show me doing that. Uh, yeah, and then we'll get that door back on. And we'll keep our fingers crossed for them down there. Well, I ain't too sure whether that's as much as I can do or as much as I'm going to do. But it ain't both, that's for sure. Oh man, it half escalate quick, doesn't it? Once you start and all that, you finish that little saying off yourself. Um, what I think I'm going to do, I've took off as much as I can in that pass. I've sanded it off, got rid of the loose bits. Um, so what I think I'm going to do Let's give it one more coat of this, then one more scrape down, and then that, that'll be it. And then I've got to work out where all the imperfections are that might need filling. Because so I have cut the wood myself in a couple of places, and taken it off as exposed a couple of bits where it's been done in the past. But I'm never going to be able to see that, am I? I mean, I'm no wood stripping paint expert. But in this state, I'm never going to be able to see it all. So what I think I'm going to do, I've convinced myself it's a good idea. You do everything that I've just said and then give it a really quick, even coat of undercoat, white, obviously. And that will show all the imperfections up then. And then I'll be able to decide what to fill and what not to fill. And then I'll start, and then I'll fill it, sand it, and then I'll start the proper process of undercoating it and blah, blah, blah. So yeah, that's what I think I'm going to do. Right then, we'll come back to this at a later stage. Well, that's just for a quick comparison. These are the original hinges. They've both been dipped in, I say dipped, soaked in some rust remover liquid I've got. Um, I took them out and I'll just give them a, a quick buffing up with one of them. And look at that. Come up lovely, isn't it? That's how it was and that's how it is. And what, what's also happened is by going, by screwing into this piece of wood, uh, to do it, hold them down tight while I'm doing it. It's took the gold off or the brass off, whatever, off the screw and turn them silver, which is even nicer, isn't it? So I might put them all in and give them a go going over so they all match up. Uh, they're just normal, normal screws, man. Nothing special about them, but they look nicer, silver, don't they? Then they will do being that color. So there you go. So I'm going to give us another go now. Yeah, I look, turn them over. And uh, do it again and get them up there. Look at that, Clark's. My dad reckons it might have been from Wensbury. Did he say Will and all? I don't know. Local anyway, by all accounts. But there we have it. Anyway. Of course, when I mean backs, I just mean get as much paint off as I can off the actual back of the hinges. Not to clean the entire thing, but as the head's done, beautiful. I'm we'll getting back on now. What do you think about that? That went a lot further than I thought it was going to. But guess what happened? Old Papa Bear turned up. He went, you want to use your heat gun? So what heat gun? To the one that's in the front room. So we spent an hour at it and finished it all off. <laughs> but there we go. Beautiful. Right then. A quick coat of, of uh, undercoat. See where we are with it. And that'll be that. And there we have it. My dad took over and did a far better job than I was doing. Got all the paint off, primed it all up, ready for its full dose of TLC. Obviously, that's not a 21st century ready letterbox. That is obsolete now, so I need a bigger and better one in there. Got the weather strip on, all that sort of thing. All looks very, very nice. I forgot to film it before I boarded that up for painting. But I'll put a picture on the screen now of what it was. What it looked like with the light behind it on the first uh, the first time we had it swinging the other night. It looks very nice, doesn't it? A lot of work to be done, but there we go. We'll just check this out. Oh, that's a nice noise, isn't it? It's just nice. Very, very nice. And to boot, the frame has got, well, it's got two, look, of, uh, what do you call them, 
bolt holes, I suppose, so straight across. Well, on this door, and we bought it, was a bolt. And I've cleaned it up, which I'm going to feature in a short. In the same way as I did the uh, hinges. And there we go. British made. I think I've ever seen the words British made, made in Britain or whatnot. Or, or, anyway, so that then, a bit of extra, is going to go, the original bolt from the door, will go into the original hole of the frame. It's a bit off, it's a bit on the panel there, look. And I've got to pack it out a little bit, get some washers behind it, but it's a nice little thing, isn't it? It's a nice thing. So, yeah, we'll be using that. Right then. I just thought I'll show you, not that you can really see it, I suppose, but I'm happy to announce that everything is glossed, finished, done, up here. The lot. And I'm very, very happy with the way it's turned out. So we are ready for carpets, unbelievably, that are ordered, which is ace. So we're all done up here. And we're all done in here. I mean, I'm just showing you white stuff now, aren't I? So, but there we go. But the stairs are done. Stair parts are for another time. As and when, and we're done all the way up to the front door of the loft. In the loft, well, all that needs decorating because it's just turned into a bit of a, a dusty bomb site. But there's one last thing I wanted to show you. Originally, just like all the other houses on this road. The front of the house, first floor, had two separate windows. I've gone to this before, but it was episodes back. And in between those windows, obviously, a panel, a brick panel. And when you stood where I'm stood now, which on me landing, and I'm looking towards the bedroom, through the bedroom, and out the front of the house, that panel was bang in line with the door. So where I'm stood now, I'll just be looking at a wall. I didn't like that because there's quite a nice view on the other side and I want to be able to stand it and then, you know, we can just glance up and it's there, it's just nice. I thought it'd be nicer, even though it's a bedroom and that door might be shut sometimes. Anyway, so I took both windows out, I took the pillar out between it and I put one big window in. And it's only really today, after all this work, that all the paintings done that were ready apart from carpets that I could really see the benefit of. I just thought I'll share it with you. And this is why. Ain't that something? Beautiful. I just wanted to make the most of that view. Granted, it's just a couple of trees. <laughs> but knowing that they're there and being stood here and that being completely blanked off. Now, I think that just, I think that's beautiful. So that's why, that's why I did that. A couple of people at the time said, what do you need to do with that? And I was a bit big and whatnot. But, I mean, come on. If I, was to have, if I was to do this again, I'll do that again. Having seen that, that's the first time I've really seen it. All done, all decorated, window board in the lot. Anyway, there we go. Right then, so there we go. Not the, I'll show that a few one more time. It's beautiful. Not the episode I thought it was going to be. Uh, it hasn't been the week I thought it was going to be, but it just means that other stuff that needed doing has been done before the stuff I thought was gonna get done. So the deadline getting back in for Christmas is still up and running. Uh, next episode, hopefully, the issue downstairs with the worktops will be rectified. And then we'll go from there, shall we? Today is the 3rd of November, so you're bang up to date with how it's all going. This is going to turn into a week by week thing, I think, until Christmas, until we actually get in there. Remind me until next February, until we get in there. But everything's going to be documented. 
Not all episodes are going to be solid gold, but you know, bear with us, there might be some gems within them, you know what I mean? And uh, yeah, so if you made it up, up to now, thank you very much, thanks for watching, and until next time, take care.